time is a crucial factor in consistency, longevity, and success. Meaning that you, you need to know what you're looking for. Why do the setups or why should the setups form? What's the basis or premise behind the setups? Like what makes your trade idea that you're about to take or what you're stalking or hunting, what makes it viable? Is it something that's, you know, built on your impulsive tendencies to just look for something? Or is it rooted in something that's sound and logic? My audience is the individual that has been introduced to the idea of my order block theory, my fair value gap. Now, like since February, the the interest in new week opening gaps, new day opening gaps, breakers, and all the other PD arrays that you've been made aware of. And you probably feel like there's probably one better than the rest. I want to learn that one. If ICT could just sit down in a Twitter space or do a YouTube presentation or do a live stream and say, okay, if I were going to just tell you the best of the best and get right down to the nitty gritty where the rubber meets the road, this is the only thing that you would ever need to do <laughs> that doesn't exist because they're all equally effective to me. Now, from a mentor's perspective, I found that certain PD arrays and certain particular models are a little bit easier, more palatable for students, whether there have been a long duration of time spending you know, under my wing as an educator or if they just recently discovered me in like 21 or 22 or, or this year. And that being like the 2022 model and now the silver bullet that I released on Twitter. What is a time-based need or influence in trading? Well, let's think about it like this. Maybe you have a job right now. Maybe you have a, a job that you go to and or maybe you're older and you've retired or maybe trading has been an, an allowance for you to no longer have to work anymore. But you know what it was like to be in rush hour traffic, right? Uh, in the States, in the United States, we have generally two times of the day where it's considered rush hour and you, you don't want to be on the busy highways and byways because they'll be congested. They are typically in the morning, seven o'clock and nine o'clock in the morning. And in the evening time or afternoon, it's 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Those two hours in both morning and evening session, if you're looking at traffic like trading, uh, that is scheduled volume. You can set a clock to it. You know it's going to be there. And if you travel like I like to do, well, the same thing occurs in trading. And I want you to think about the importance of knowing when there is going to be scheduled volume inflows. What does that mean? Certain times of the day, there is a reasonable expectation that there's going to be a lot of interest to be trading. That's at the beginning of the trading sessions, being like London, New York session AM, or for Forex traders, New York open kill zone, and or the London closed session for Forex traders, or the lunch hour for index trading. And then you have the PM session, which is two o'clock to four o'clock. So you can anticipate setups that will form within those little specific time windows. Now, as a human being, you have character flaws. And you have to limit the exposure in these charts and these markets because your natural impulses, which are always going to be negative, the negative is going to overwhelm the few times that you are in the beginning doing the right things at the right time. And it only takes a small series of events that you did wrong with a mindset that was incorrectly focusing on things that aren't that big of a deal. You need to have this same approach or mindset about trading that you do with traffic. If you were going to go away on a trip and you were doing a road trip driving, are you going to plan your departure during the peak of rush hour traffic? No, you're not. When would you likely do it? Well before it, before it happens, that way you can get through the congested scheduled traffic jams around high congested cities, the rush hour of nine o'clock in the morning in the States, wherever you are, 
There's traffic, yes, but it's not congested or or, or bunched up. You can have a, a pretty easy movement from one location to the next, unless there's an accident or something like that. Well, that same thing should be applied to your trading. Do you want to go in at the very opening of, say, for instance, 9.30 a.m.? If you're brand new to trading, you don't you don't know what you're doing. That's equivalent to you being a new driver. Do you want to be going out there over the speed limit? texting while you're driving in rush hour what's that recipe for disaster all right so you don't want to schedule your trading if you're brand new at the very opening like the first minute or two of trading because you know that now everybody's in there dog piling in to take trades so you think everybody in there is going to be pushing the market up because of their buying pressure or they're going to be sending the market lower because of their selling pressure and again, that's all misinformation that you're all trying to do something at their incorrect time. And that compounds the likelihood of you wrecking. Just like in traffic as a new driver, you don't do all those high speed maneuvers when you're inexperienced. You don't distract yourself with social media during your driving or in your trading. That means keeping up with everybody else. You need to be minding your own business and watching where you're traveling. When you're driving, years and years ago, you don't want to be reacting to the drivers around you. Now, obviously, we, we would have to. In price action, you don't want to be reacting to the knee-jerk reactions in you know, lower time frames because you could be convincing yourself rather quickly, oh, it's not going to do what I thought it was going to do. Let me do this because now this one-minute chart or this five-minute chart has done this or that. You have to anticipate the thoughts and expectations of individuals that are going to see price action and they're going to anticipate nothing in the future. They're going to react. They're going to chase, which is why my Judas swing is so effective at the right time. Time. So there's a time and place for everything, but you, you are not to try to react to price. Even in your entries, you're not reacting. You're anticipating. When you're moving your stop loss, you're not reacting. You're anticipating. When you're taking your partials, you're not reacting. You're anticipating it going to a specific level so that way you can press the exit or have your limit orders there to scale off your potential partial profits that always pay 100%. They never, ever fail. So when we look at price or when we're looking for setups or we're trading a particular model, Time is a very important factor. There has to be a reason for that trade to even materialize. And you don't want to go in there in the first few minutes of trading and say, okay, this is it. I'm going in because now the markets have opened. Everybody else is dogpiling and everybody else is you know, creating this congestion like rush hour. And I'm afraid I'm going to be left behind. So I have to do what? I have to react to what, what I see in the price action. So therefore, I have to do whatever else is doing. And that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Let's talk about each individual session, okay, and some of the characteristics that each one of those trading sessions have and how you should go into those trading sessions with the proper mindset for anticipation, not reacting. It is absolutely your job to predict the future. That's why most of them fail because they don't have the skill set, number one, to anticipate things that are generically in price action, and they're all time-based. You can set clocks to it. And that's the reason why I'm consistent. When I talk about things that should happen in the marketplace, the, the primary function behind the accuracy is I'm only really focusing on specific times. I look for inefficiencies and liquidity. That's it. That's all there is. And I look for that in time. Specific times of the day. There's very specific times of the day where you as a trader can say, I have to be able to control myself and not allow impulsiveness to come into the marketplace and draw me in to trades that would equate to overtrading, which is a problem even for traders that can be profitable. And maybe you have done this. You, you can go in, you can find a trade or two and get profits, but then you want to do something else. Maybe because you see me tweet something, maybe you see other traders out there, other influencers, and you see them doing something. 
and you can't get the dopamine hit that you know that they're getting when they win, if they're even winning, you don't know if they're being honest with you. So you seek that hit, that feel good, that rail like on cocaine. Okay, you want to get a high. You can't treat the markets like a drug. You can't treat it like, you know, a bump of adrenaline. This is a business. You need to mind your business. And when you make money, the job is to keep the money. So if you don't trust your model and you're not following a, a rule-based idea and you take a trade off that could have paid your full profit or more, you can't worry about or more. Because if your targets have limit orders on it, how can you get upset that it went past it and went more? Why should you be upset about that? Your business model was you were taking a trade to that point. Your business model says you had a stop loss at this point risking that much money. You were anticipating in the beginning, but now you're reacting to the influences of maybe something I've tweeted, a student of mine has done, other influencer, other trader, other YouTuber. You're not trading your trade anymore, is it? It's you reacting. Reacting to trades, reacting to price, reacting to other people's success or failures is a recipe for failure. You have to keep that stuff at a very small level of influence. And it's better, really, to not have it at all. I promise when you guys get to the point where you know what you're doing and you leave social media, you turn it off. Your trading is going to go through the roof. Your performance is going to be astounding. You're not going to care how you measure up to somebody else. And you're not going to worry about what they're doing, how bad they hurt themselves, or how much money they made, or what their payout is, or where they're at on the FTMO leaderboard. All those things are there to cause you to do more of what is likely to incur failure. The statistics are there. 90% of people fail doing this. So if you entice them to do it more frequently with larger leverage than they should, you can trade with 15 contracts with your funded account challenge. Well, guess what? That is a recipe for them to get another reset fee from you.